we have deepa chatta from singapore who is into nutrition and spiritual healing and she speaks of calibration calibration of our consciousness so i'll ask few Hi. questions if you don't mind sure so you were speaking about uh, levels of consciousness so can you just give a brief about it right um so like we were mentioning talking about it earlier actually there are quite a level of uh, consciousness um you can calibrate consciousness on a scale of 0 to 1000 um and um on that spectrum around at uh, 600 is the mm. level of consciousness where you're supposed to be enlightened um and up to 200 you're at a consciousness which is on the negative realm okay and after 200 you get on the positive side of consciousness so if you move up the scale from 200 to 500 um you reach a stage of on the consciousness level of love and at 540 to unconditional love okay so i'll interrupt you so you mean to say every person in this world has a consciousness of to 200 uh yes yeah, so roughly at the moment in the yeah. world yeah. the average is about 208 around there 210 200. the level of consciousness but of course every country has a different level of consciousness and um each individual as well but this is the average okay the and you were speaking about left brain and right brain and how 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 hmm So um basically the way our education system is built at the moment in the world is a very left brain so yeah. everything has to be backed by a lot of data analysis hardcore proof um whereas um that happens up to the consciousness level of 499 so for people like einstein um freud who are very left brain analytical kind of people their consciousness was about it stops about 499 490 only 499 and yes. they say that einstein used only 10% of his brain yes so that's uh, another aspect to it about yeah. using the percentage yeah. of the brain but level of consciousness calibration is like if you're at 499 you're still very left brain in the sense you need hardcore data backing every kind of thing so from there you have to make a real paradigm shift to move to 500 okay. which is no more about a uh, left brain hardcore data it's more about faith so you moved to the level of you know having faith and beyond 500 yeah is when you moved into another realm so that is why it's difficult to make that jump for everybody because currently the way our education system is also built is a very left brain kind of hardcore analytical proof oriented kind of education system okay. so so i'll just uh, interrupt that faith healing Jesus Christ has also mentioned and there are like 23 cases in John's and Matthew's Bible which speak about faith healing. And you mean to say that faith is more above above your logic. Yes, But once you, once you rise above intellect then you are spiritual. Well, um you're always a spiritual being. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. you're always a spiritual being you just have not realized uh-huh. that at that um well let's put it like this um you have the intellect yeah. and the intellect has to be used yes. for everything yeah. it's not that yeah. we give up the intellect yeah. no uh-huh. but beyond 500 it's more about being connected ultimately to super consciousness <coughs> you know whether we call that as um um super consciousness atma prana consciousness whatever god these are all just names for that mm-hmm. um, um sphere of consciousness mm-hmm. and to connect to that you mm-hmm. have to then be beyond 500 where mm-hmm. it's now on the realm of faith and um um and then what happens is you do use your intellect as and when required mm-hmm. but you don't need it for every kind of uh mm-hmm. healing so um more and more you will notice synchronicities will happen in your life mm-hmm. more and more you're connected to super consciousness so mm-hmm. whatever things need to manifest you will attract that mm-hmm. and you will be able to 
do it. Yes. So it's more of a spiritual, you're connected. Your soul mm -hmm. is, which is nothing but a microcosm of that macrocosm's mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. gets connected in a way. Mm -hmm. So things then manifest. But you have to be able to make that jump uh -huh. from that 499 then into a realm of, you know, faith and beyond. So who all have achieved, like Arbindo, you were speaking about Arbindo, what level did he reach? I'm not too sure about the Arbindo, but there have been different masters yeah. in different eras yeah. who have reached um, 600 and beyond, which is mm -hmm. the stage of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. um, there are those in 500s, like I said, currently also yeah. lots on the planet. If uh, on the whole we have about a zero point, there's a, some kind of a figure, I think it's about 0 0.04% or so. Yeah, 0.4%. Yes. Huh. If we reach, if humanity, that much percentage of humanity actually uh, reaches the higher level states of consciousness, then it's able to pull the rest of us up as well. So we need about that much to keep the balance. On the yeah, planet. French mother says that the difference between higher consciousness and lower is there is like the difference between man and animal so the same way higher consciousness and average person the difference is like that and she says that we have four types of mind there is like illumined mind intuitive mind and once you cross the intellect when there is you know no mind kind of thing when, when you stop working with intellect and you rise above it when you rise above your mind then i think you are saying that 500 right level. so unconditional love right so how it happens is you still use your mind as and when is required yeah. your mind just doesn't bombard you with the same kind of thoughts each time so mm. you will be able to create any like any artist yeah. He's able to create something new, any, you know, mm. um, and, and that happens through breakthroughs in consciousness. He's connected to that. And so he mm. creates a new piece of art. Yeah. You see now, or any scientist, he will still use his mind. You will still use your mind, but okay. it will only be useful as and when you require it yeah. and not be bombarding you with the same thoughts over and over again. You know, okay. so you are still using your mind, but when you have, um, come to the realm of higher states of consciousness beyond mm. a certain point, mm. you do become just unconditional love. And then all mm. you just have for everybody is mm. an outpouring of that love. Mm. Whether that compassion and empathy flows into your neighbor, your child, yeah. um, or um, an animal, mm -hmm. um, anything, mm. you know? So you just become unconditional love and that just flows into everything yeah. in your environment. Yeah. So, it's only from that state then actually mm -hmm. true healing can take place. Then you can just heal by your presence, you know? Uh -huh. uh, you can just be in the presence of somebody at that level and you heal. Mm -hmm. So you could use any modality after that. You know, you could use um, a meditation, a mantra, or any kind of energy healing, pranic healing, any form. But once you're in that realm of unconditional love, then True healing in that presence of that person automatically happens. So you were speaking of a lady who was a healer uh, and she was speaking on anti-aging and she, you said she was talking about her wrinkles at the age of 48 and you said you did not see her wrinkles. You only could feel her energy, her smile. Mm. What was that? I mean, we're all energy beings, right? We're all energy just vibrating at different frequencies. So um, to me, I feel we, we, we tend to focus a lot on, on our external. And um, I think 99% of consciousness is focused there, mm -hmm. but not on the kind of person we're internally becoming or yeah. the way we are raising our consciousness level. Mm -hmm. um, and if we are just energy, and if you notice, whenever somebody enters the room, more than anything, the first thing we notice really is their energy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, some people just pull you up with their presence. You know, you feel so positive and high vibration. Yeah. And some people, when they enter the room, you just immediately feel like, you know, you're just drained of all your energy. So um, 
so it's just it's all energy ultimately isn't it so instead of um we noticing somebody's wrinkles or we noticing the external the first thing we really feel is their vibe their energy their mm -hmm. presence you know and you that said that Ramana, Ramana Maharshi's energy was yes he was wow. he was very he was very highly involved so he was uh, almost in the realms of 700 then. 700 yeah and so I think there was some 620 you said. somewhere there I think yes yeah. so all these spiritual masters um, mm. have to be 540 and beyond 540 which is the state of unconditional beyond. love and you said the highest is like thousand yes that's and what you said has anyone ever reached, yeah. reached it few of our masters like Buddha, Jesus, Buddha? Buddha, Mahavir, Jesus. they were at about thousand years. Some of our um, very good, uh, all our spiritual books, the Gita mm. and even in Mahayana Buddhism, they're mm. all calibrated at 900 and beyond, mm. according to yeah, Dr. Hawkins, yeah. uh, as said by him in his research, that uh, he actually calibrated for all the um, spiritual texts. And uh, have reached that level of consciousness. So, what does Doctor Hawkins say? What does? How does he calculate this calibration? Oh, of this? so there's something called the muscle testing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And with the help of the muscle testing, mm. you basically put everything out. You're asking the that consciousness, uh, you know, yeah. that realm of consciousness. Mm. Now, that realm of consciousness never lies. It, there's truth in that, you know. Uh -huh. There's, um, it's either false or truth. So to know the the truth of anything, uh, that that realm never lies. That's so, it. Yeah. So if you can get in touch with that through the muscle testing, yeah. you just pose the question, yeah. and whatever resonates for you, even something like a, a supplement yeah. or a particular food, a fruit or something. Mm. It may not resonate with you and may not add to your energetic level, yeah. to your energy. Or it may be very good for you or may be detrimental for you. So the simple muscle testing okay. mm -hmm. can show whether that um, thing is good for you or not. Okay. So and he tested how many? He was saying uh, he tested all spiritual beings. And, yes. Uh, yeah. So mm. most of our spiritual masters um, and um, our spiritual books, and um, so, yes, he's done it on a whole spectrum of um, things he's calibrated over the years. So can you share your story, how you came into all this and how you are going through this journey, your experience? Mm. Um, for me, um, I think it was somewhere after my second uh, kid, uh, mm -hmm. the birth of my second child, mm -hmm. and I just... I guess the timing must have been right or whatever and it was destined i just uh, gravitated on the path mm -hmm. um, and um, i remember initially um, i would uh, listen to all the text uh, books that i could get my hands on mm -hmm. whether it was uh, in hinduism mm -hmm. or mainstream mm -hmm. beautiful authors spiritual masters in the west who had written or Buddhism, I went through mm. a lot of Buddhism. And it was a journey really for me, um, almost 15 year journey. And um, really there's no structure to it. There's no fixed path. Nobody mm. has a fixed journey on it. We mm. all just kind of find our way, mm. you know. I guess when the intention is that powerful, things just flow in your life and you know, mm -hmm. you attract those and you grow along the way. And, um, so That's you last time. time when you came and you told me about this Anita Moor journey. Mm. Can you just share her story? Yeah, actually Anita Moor journey, um, she had this out of body, actually near death experience. Near death. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Huh. If I can recollect, she had terminal cancer. Yeah, eleven size tumor. Yes. Four, I think, dissolved. Within four Actually, her whole body was full of tumors, and she was in the last stage. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, and then all the doctors had said she wouldn't survive, of course. And um, and they, I remember she she uh, was given, I think just about a month or so, and to live, and then she was in the hospital, and um, 